Hi everyone, this is Jamie from Painted Lady Tarot, and today we're going to do a quick walkthrough of the Tarot of the Master, the facsimile of the E Nebi di Giovanni Vachetta. Uh, it was originally published in 1893, but this is the Los Scarabeo edition from 2002. It's the mass market, readily available. You can pick up a copy on Amazon for $20, $25, so it's very reasonably priced. Now, this one comes in just your standard talk box. Nothing to get excited about. Now, the little white book is actually not so much a little white book, but a little white fold-out. It's completely in English, and it's the equivalent of about 10 pages. There's a little blurb for every major arcana, a little blurb for each of the minor arcana, but you do have some very interesting information about uh, Giovanni Vachetta and about this deck, which is pretty cool. So there's, I like stuff that have that, that historical information, so I think it's a, it's a win. It's a good one. Now, as for the deck... <clears throat> First card... It's just your pretty standard intro card here. And the next card is just, you know, a commercial, if you will, with a bunch of other cards that are available by them, some decks, rather. Now we get into the cards. First things first, let's talk about how much I hate these horrific green borders that they have decided to put on it. I don't know why they did that. Unfortunately, with a lot of the low Scarabeo decks, they put these gross borders on them. I really don't like these ones. And I will definitely be cropping them off as soon as I finish this video. Now, the... Hold on a second here. So we'll start with the Fool. So we have this strange looking Fool. It's a little bit weird. We've got... Uh, there's no little white dog. We've got a cheetah instead. Oh, let's also point out the backs on these cards. They decided to basically use the Magician as their card back. It's like in a, almost like a greenish gray scale. I, I hate it, I'm not a fan, but I don't lay my cards face down, so not a huge, not a deal breaker because uh, no one's gonna see them anyway. As for a Magician, he's very much like that Marseille style. He looks kind of like a street performer. And uh, let's also look at how cool, see the color scale they used? It's a nice palette that they used for this deck. Now, if you look at the Il Manigello version of the Vachetta, it's a darker, uh, darker colors that they used. I actually prefer the Los Scarabeo one. Uh, the Pappas. The Empress. A very young emperor. <clears throat> and very scowly. Look at the look on his face. He's very unimpressed. And we have our Pope, or Hierophant in this case. And this one's very interesting. Usually we would see the lovers. In this case, it's just love. And it's being portrayed as a Cupid. And we see two doves here. It's very nice, actually. I, I like it quite a lot. We have our chariot. It's an interesting chariot. There are no horses. Uh, there's nothing pulling it in this. It's very stationary. <laughs> very interesting. Here we have Justice. She's uh, pretty standard. And with the Hermit. The Hermit is really interesting. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen any other decks that have the Hermit just chilling. You see the path, so he's been walking around, doing his Hermit thing. He's got his little lantern here, but he was like, you know what? I'm just going to sit down and chill for a while. So you got the chilling Hermit. Wheel of Fortune. And this poor woman who's being rolled over by the wheel. Then we have strength. Now, a lot of times with the historical decks, you'll see uh, either it's like 
the person with a lion or a woman with a pillar. This one they've used the pillar and the lion and she's got her hand out. She's not even touching the lion. She's kind of like, that's enough. That'll do pig. That'll do. I kind of dig it. It's cool. It's cool. Our hangman. <clears throat> The death card is hysterical. Look at, he's got this, he's got a hat with a feather sticking out of it. He's got a whole bunch of, oh, looks like religious stuff, a crown. Very interesting. He's got that ship sailing off, which is cool because you see, you know, when something ends, something else, something else goes. So I like it. And like I said, I find it hard to take uh, any death card seriously that's got a feather in his cap. It's pretty funny. Temperance is a pretty standard temperance card. The devil. This is one of the strangest devil cards I've ever seen. First of all, he's got these bizarre saggy boobs. And he's got like some kind of lizard chicken legs going on. And he's sitting in the mouth of a demon. It almost looks like, you know, uh, those fun houses. Very, very strange. Uh, I'm fascinated by this devil card. The tower, mm, pretty standard. The star. The moon, this is not very standard looking. We see, uh, we got our little crab guy here that you know we're used to seeing. Uh, we do have the dog that you know, you know really, you see the dog, but this one it's kind of got that whole Diana Artemis thing going on with her, her bow and her hunting dog. Very, very interesting. The sun uh, looks like probably Apollo, I'm assuming. Judgment, also pretty standard, what we're used to seeing in this card. And the world, now you've got, uh, you've got your lion, your bull, your eagle, all elements that we, we often see in this card. But this is very beautiful though, I, I really, really enjoy this. Now we get to our pips. Now, this is kind of part of the charm of this deck actually, is the way that they did um, their pip cards. Usually in the older historical decks, when we're looking at the pips, they're not illustrated anything more than their items. So if it's cups, all you're gonna see is cups. If it's swords, pretty much all you see is swords. Now in this one, we get a whole bunch of other elements that they put into the cards, which are really nice to see. And it's also very helpful for somebody who is maybe used to working with Pamela Coleman Smith style, where we have the illustrated pips. So these are not illustrated like a, like an RWS deck, but they're also not as unillustrated as say like an old Marseille. So it's kind of like a happy go-between. I think I would recommend this deck to people that would like to try working more with the unillustrated pips. So our first one here, we've got our cups. Look at here, it's very interesting. We've even got, uh, they're even being illustrated here as like oil lamps. That's very interesting, I've never seen that before. We've got all these other elements in here. I mean, they're beautiful, beautiful pip cards. I absolutely love these. Okay, next we have our coins, so the Denari. Also beautifully illustrated. These are just gorgeous. Now on this edition, you see here, they even have uh, keywords. So we have ungratefulness. That's in the four. So if you are someone who's new to working with the not so illustrated pips, this might be helpful for you. Difficulty in the fives. So you get to have these little, little keywords that 
that might be helpful for you in transitioning from uh, fully illustrated pips to lesser. Oh, I like this, look, reflection, but we've got this, our page, and he looks like he's gambling. Look at that guy with the cards, that's pretty cool, I like that. Oh, look at the king. He's being illustrated as a like that Jewish money lender. Kind of reminds me of the merchant. What I imagine the merchant of Venice would look like, actually. Pretty cool. I like that. Now we have the wands. Looks like a jester stick going on there. Very interesting. Is so cool look at this is the seven of wands but look at all these different things it's like different tools that have all been like here uh, you've got like a um like a cane and you've got a scepter you've got oh look a mace that is super cool i really like this one this looks, looks like some kind of a pipe organ maybe And last but not least, we come to our swords. Beautifully illustrated. Uh, I can see why people have gone so nuts over this deck. I mean, it's just, it's gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. You figure this deck came out about 15 years before uh, the Pamela Coleman Smith deck. Which is nice. We really start seeing how all of these cards are going together. Oh, look at this. Look at all these nine swords all in that heart. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Okay. This is officially my favorite card in this deck. Here we have the queen, of, uh, the queen of Swords. Now, she's sitting there holding her sword. I'm not entirely sure why she's holding it by the blade, but you go, girl. Let's take a second. See, at first you look at it, you're like, wow, there's a beautiful queen. Then you're like, hey, what's in your bag there, sweetheart? Then you're like, hey, there's some decapitated dude hanging out of a tent. I don't know who this woman is. I will be investigating because this is pretty awesome. Talk about it's a real girl power, chopped off a guy's head, carrying it in a bag. I love this card. That is awesome. And the final card, which of course is the King of Swords. Also, he's pretty boss. He's got a full armor going on. Now, that's it for this. But next thing I just want to talk about here, um, as usual, we're going to talk about our card stock. Um, not going to lie, it's so nice and it's pretty skinny. It's very slippy, so these guys are super easy to shuffle. However, they're pretty thin. These are uh, not a thing. I guess I'm used to, I've been doing so much work with the Il Managallo decks lately and I'm used to a really thick solid card. This one feels super duper flimsy by comparison. Uh, time will tell how long these guys hold up for. Um, like I said, my biggest issue with this deck is the borders with the keywords. I hate borders with keywords. So. I will be doing a borderectomy today. So I'm going to chop the borders off this. When I do my borders, obviously we go with our handy dandy scissors here. Then when I'm finished with that, now in the old style decks, of course we have the pointed corners. So I'm not sure if I'm going to leave uh, the corners pointy or if I'm going to round them. Here is my, my rounder that I use. To give uh, you know, to round those 
corners off, so I haven't decided yet if I'm going to use that. We'll think about it. And then the next step after I do it, I like to dis I use this Distress Ink. Um, who is this by? Uh, Tim Holtz. In this case, I'm going to be using Antique Linen and Vintage Photo. I like to use two. Like I'll put one up the side and then a different color on the corners. So I'm going to pause this video. I'm going to crop this deck up, and I'll be right back. All right, so I did two cards just to give you an idea of what these guys are going to look like when I'm finished. So this is the pre-cropped size. This is the crop size. If we hold them together here, do, do, do. it's quite a difference. Uh, they were not large to begin with. They were like your pretty standard low scarabeo side. Now they're little. I enjoy the small card, but I really like how it makes the image pop and I don't have to see those keywords or the borders. So I am really liking how these guys turned out. Uh, Kelly in Truth and Story, she went ahead and chopped all the borders off of hers too. And I loved the way that they looked on hers. So I knew how they were going to look ahead of time because Kelly did a great job on hers. So I have gone ahead and done the same. I will now go ahead and do the whole deck. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up and a subscribe. I'll see you soon. Bye.